Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim or Sim Naya. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. I hope you all are doing great. So today we'll be talking something very important. And this is actually coming from a student absolutely in Korea, right? I think he probably might, he or she probably might have experienced so many things. And there is actually this man, Korean man, who is always eager to answer black people's question, especially on racism and other things. And uh uh, so the young man was actually saying that uh, moving to Korea uh, as a black person was one of his biggest mistakes and all that unless that it's only good if you are uh, a Korea, like if you are a white person in Korea. And uh, he also went further to say that he is a black student and uh, I mean that the race, like the what he experienced there is uh, really very horrible and they also do not think that people that look like me are humans, you know. So you probably might have like kind of uh, noticed the first you can hear the frustration from this person's voice and all of that. He probably might have experienced some certain things firsthand and all of that. And a lot of people like black people who also have lived there or are living there also came up or came out to also explain to people that uh, if anybody's telling you that there is something like racism there that they are actually lying to you, and they also went for that to explain why they said that like that people like me are actually not like you know when they get to Korea and the rest of it. Let's get into this video. Thank you, Miss Yoon, for commenting this. Um, first of all, thank you for being here with us in South Korea. As you guys all know, uh, your presence here with us is just Priceless. Thank you for coming to Korea for your hopes and dreams. And secondly, uh, my apologies on behalf of all Koreans, and especially on behalf of those people who are probably close to you, and especially on behalf of those people who made you feel this way. Mm, I am pretty much certain that not all Koreans are abusive towards dark colored people but sure enough there are certain people to be blamed for such low conscious behavior um, again uh, my apologies on behalf of such people who are you know, discriminatory towards foreigners, especially towards uh, black people. And I think this is probably the real face of South Korea, which is nothing close to K-pop or K-drama. And maybe this is uh, the reality of living in a foreign country. But one thing I can tell you is that your endeavors, your hopes and dreams are way greater than your challenges and obstacles. So I am hopeful you can just stick it out until you achieve your dreams and goals here in South Korea. Again, uh, there are people acknowledging your invaluable presence here with us in South Korea because uh, South Korea needs you. South Korea is dependent on you guys. So please hang in there. Yes, it's difficult. Very, very challenging. But again, your hopes and dreams are way, way greater than your difficulties and hurdles. Hopefully this is helpful. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Page, for commenting this. Um, 
to be honest with you, at the individual level, Koreans don't hate Africans. That is not the real issue. The real problem is that at the governmental level, South Korean government is not very friendly to African countries when it comes to issuing visas. That is the real challenge here. For example, there is no single country in Africa that signed the MOU on the KEPS, meaning that none of the citizens in Africa is eligible to work in the field of non-skilled professions in South Korea when there are so many of you guys willing to work in such fields. Also, except for a very few nations in Africa, most citizens in Africa would need C3 visa to South Korea just for traveling. You guys will have to prove to the South Korean government that you have certain amount of um, balance in your bank account along with the requirement that you guys have to uh, submit your criminal record check just to be eligible to travel to Korea. Also, when there are quite a few uh, countries in Africa where the English is the official language, the citizens of South Africa is the only people that can teach English here in South Korea, which is discriminatory, right? Discriminatory uh, against you guys that speak English as your official language. <coughs> Lastly, Koreans tend to uh, you know, subtly despise those people from those countries where the GDP per capita is relatively low. Uh, Koreans don't say it out loud on the surface, but I cannot deny that there is tendency for South Koreans to, um, you know, have a little bit of contempt for those people uh, with low GDP per capita. And there are many more issues other than these factors that I've just mentioned but hopefully uh, this is informative to you guys so how do we move to South Korea the best bet is to start school first I mentioned this in one of my previous videos so hopefully you can uh, go check out the video anyways um, thank you for listening I'll come back to you guys with more uh, the relationship with the South Korean government and the African countries. Uh, have a great day. Okay, so I get asked a lot about like the racism in Korea and I think that one has to understand that you are going to a country that was formerly colonized by America and therefore American ideals have seeped into every waking moment of that country. White supremacy is rampant. Xenophobia, insane. So anti-blackness, through the roof. So if you go there with that m mindset, you won't be surprised by anything. When you get turned away from clubs, you won't be surprised because it happens in America. When you get like some comments that are just so ridiculous it won't surprise you because that country as much as I love it as much as I would want to go visit there again it's not a safe place for dark-skinned people even their own dark-skinned people is not a safe space for them so 
yeah, there's a lot of racism. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. There's a lot of xenophobia. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. And it's mainly targeted towards people that are darker skinned and people that don't look Asian or don't fit any sort of beauty standard in, in Korea. So yeah, that's my thoughts on racism in Korea. So the other day, somebody asked me um, in my DMs, is Korea racist or in my opinion, do I think Korea is racist? In my humble opinion, yes, Korea is racist and anyone who tells you that it's not is delusional, lying, or lacks melanin. So before I get into my opinion really, let me preface this by saying that this is not unique to Korea. Um, systems of discrimination and prejudice and racism exist in every country on this planet, so it's not just Korea. Um, but please note that depending on the country and the history of the country, that prejudice and racism and discrimination manifests itself um, in different ways. So in Korea, or people who have been to Korea, you will hear a lot of people say that Korea is not racist, um, they're more so xenophobic, um, which is true, Korea is very xenophobic, just like most countries in the world, some are more xenophobic than others, but the problem with saying that Korea is solely xenophobic and not racist is that it implies that um, basically all non-Korean people or all foreigners um, experience the same level of discrimination and prejudice, which is not true. The reality is, just like any other country in the world, that depending on your demographic, meaning that your nationality, your uh, culture, your race or whatever, um, the level or the degree of prejudice or discrimination that you may experience will either be higher or lower. So with that being said, I don't think I really need to get into detail about what demographic or groups of people might more or might experience more discrimination than others or what groups of people might experience less discrimination than others. I think we can all figure out what the hierarchy is because it doesn't take rocket science. The other thing about um, prejudice in Korea, well, once again here, it's really about anywhere, not just Korea, is that you might hear some people say that, or some foreigners say that in comparison to their home country, that the level of discrimination that they experience as child's play are much lower. Now, that might be true because if you come from a place where there's high levels of discrimination systemically or even that manifests itself in, um, you know, physical violence, then coming to a place like Korea, it will seemingly seem like that it's not racist or not as racist. And the reality is, the point is, no, there's still racism and discrimination happening in the country, but because you're basing um, your understanding of prejudice and discrimination and racism over based on what you experience or your understanding on your own country, sometimes you will end up perceiving the place that you're currently in as better than it really is which can be problematic because then it gives people an incentive to dismiss discrimination or prejudice and racism as an actual issue or people make it seem less of an issue than it really is because discrimination, racism, and prejudice of any form, no matter how it manifests or shows up in society is wrong and needs to be addressed and should be eradicated. So there will probably be a bunch of people in the comments who will say stupid ass fucking shit like, well, oh, in Korea, oh, you're not going to get shot or this doesn't happen or this random fucking shit doesn't happen. I'm like, no, it may not. But that doesn't um, that doesn't excuse or make it OK for other things to happen. So that's just kind of what it is. And the other reality is about Korea is that discrimination is completely legal. 
doesn't necessarily have to be about racism. Any form of discrimination is completely legal. Why? Because there's no discrimination laws. Um, so that kind of obviously fosters um, a idea or premise that discrimination is okay because there's no consequence for being prejudiced or discriminating against people. Now, that is not to say that um, you should let that prevent you from visiting different places or from visiting Korea. Just know that like any other country in the world, um, it's no utopia and has its issues. So there you go. I'm talking enough about white proximity or rather the salivating at the prospect of white proximity. And by that I mean the farthest distance from blackness. We double more with whiteness. There is an aesthetic, a look within the black culture that is valued precisely because of its remoteness from blackness. Women who look like they maintain that distance from blackness are put on a pedestal as a beauty ideal. Lauded, praised, desired, and afforded access to rich, powerful black men. And because they are not white, we are gaslighted into thinking that all black women are created equal, or at least they have access, the same access to men or many or other things. A black Caribbean activist and a psychoanalyst, Franz Fanon, starts one of his books, Black Skin, White Mask, with the question, what does the black man want? Superficially, the answer is white women. But Franz Fanon's question is not about preference or not even ontological. Fanon is essentially asking what does a man want, but he has to add an identifier because white dominant culture. Beauty is a system within a white supremacy system which does not afford humanity or dignity, let alone power, to black people, black men. A white woman or a woman with white proximity is idealized as bringing access to that humanity, dignity, power. Franz Fanon, who have written so much about race, colonialism, the role of black men in society, married a white woman. Kwame Kurma, quintessential Pan-African, the first Africa-born prime minister to the first nation to gain independence from colonial rule in Africa, married an Egyptian woman who only spoke French and Arabic. He didn't speak neither, so they couldn't understand each other, at least at first. I don't know what happened later. But folks will tell you they spoke love language, and that when he went about looking for a wife, because he sent to Egypt to look for a suited wife, he was looking for more than a wife. He was looking for someone to promote Pan-Africanism with, I guess, the other African countries. And a Christian, she was Coptic Christian, because he was Christian. I guess he was the only Christian in Ghana. Having said all that, the answer to your question is very simple. Men, black or not, don't view women as human beings. Women are objects and they are used as such even when it comes to fighting for the power. Y'all can cook me and fry me and watch me burn and obliterate in the incinerator, but this all fighting for the people excludes women more often than not. That's why we hear so much about males, civil rights leaders or Pan-Africans but we know very well that women were at the heart of those fights. And again, not human. We're a chess piece. And you mentioned the Hoteps. At least the Hoteps I've met in my life subscribe to the Hamitic hypothesis, which is rejecting sub-Saharan African identity in favor of Egypt, even Israel. The farthest distance, remoteness from blackness is the key to it all. And it's not just men. Women also participate in this, not in finding a partner, a mate, because different rules about beauty standards and lots of other things applied, but in the way we want to look, and the way we want to present ourselves, we participate daily. And the lack of reflection that we exercise, and the violence and the manipulation, the gaslighting that goes into alienating dark-skinned black women when they express the degree of discrimination they experience is insane. Playing blind to texturism, colorism, etc. I don't.
So this is all I got from the stitches and I love the fact that a lot of people like especially the melanated people who actually spoke about what is going on in Korea and how like you know they are not absolutely so good to black people and all of that. I love it when people like you know explain things without having, having to hide some certain things and all of that like you know really speaking the truth truth you know and this is actually not my first time i've also had black people who all had experiences and they ex who uh, may have experienced one or two things like you know over there and i remember there was a young lady who actually like you know got into a very big uh problem with her i think her manager or something that ended up probably breaking her head or something like that and uh, that got a lot of people like you know telling black people not to go to South Korea, right? Because uh, they do not have a discriminatory law and all that. So it is okay if you are discriminated there, right? And yeah, I really don't know how, what else to say, but all I am going to say is that you all already know how some people feel about you. It's just uh, the fact that you have to uh, keep explaining to people that uh, there are some places that you go to and people that look like you are absolutely not wanted there or are not being respected or not treat, being treated nicely and all that. But then it is what it is. I remember somebody calling me right to the seas and after calling me that, I was like, I really wish that uh, I am one, you know? I mean, it's just amazing how a white person will wake up and call me a uh, racist and uh, and then you ask the person, why did you call me that? Because say, yeah, because that is what you are. Your video talks about racism and all that. So for that reason, and that I, I almost, uh, okay, I was also told that I am privileged. I never knew that uh, I have privilege as a black person. And <laughs> Yeah, it's just crazy how some people don't know how privileged they are, or they actually know that they are privileged, that uh, uh, their skin color alone is just that privilege that they need, you know. But um, they are actually so quick to tell you that uh, they are not privileged, you know. Let's assume that uh, I am, if I am traveling, just for example, there are some places as a black person that uh, I may not be able to pass, right, without being searched. You hear me right, but I say there are they go they get into almost everywhere without even being looked at, without being asked what is in your bag and how much do you have, how much are you traveling with, and all of that. All these are the privileges a lot of people enjoy, but still sit down to tell you that they do not have any privilege. Yeah, I hope someday you, I, I not even someday because all of them, most of them saying that they do not have, they know that they have privilege. That one of the reasons why if you ask them to, can you swap, like give up that your skin color for anything for a minute, they will tell you, they still cannot. The same people that tell you that they do not have privilege cannot give up their skin color for a second. That's to tell you. The reality of black people thank you all so much and see you all in my next video bye for now